Athanasius of Alexandria, Greek, Athanasios Alexandrias Athanasios Alexandrias, Coptic, or c. 296 to 298 the 2nd of May 373, also called Athanasius the Great, Athanasius the Confessor, or primarily in the Coptic Orthodox Church, Athanasius the Apostolic, was the 20th Bishop of Alexandria as Athanasius I. His on again off again episcopate spanned 45 years. C. the 8th of June 328 to the 2nd of May 373, of which over 17 encompassed five exiles. When his episcopate was replaced on the order of four different Roman emperors, Athanasius was a Christian theologian, a church father, the chief defender of Trinitarianism against Arianism, and a noted Egyptian leader of the fourth century. Conflict with Arius and Arianism, as well as successive Roman emperors, shaped Athanasius' career. In 325, at the age of 27, Athanasius began his leading role against the Arians as a deacon and assistant to Bishop Alexander of Alexandria during the First Council of Nicaea. Roman Emperor Constantine the Great had convened the council in May-August 325 to address the Arian position that the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, is of a distinct substance from the Father. Three years after that council, Athanasius succeeded his mentor as Archbishop of Alexandria. In addition to the conflict with the Arians including powerful and influential Arian churchmen led by Eusebius of Nicomedia, he struggled against the emperors Constantine, Constantius II, Julian the Apostate and Valens. He was known as Athanasius Contra Mundum Latin for Athanasius against the world. Nonetheless, within a few years after his death, Gregory of Nazianus called him the pillar of the church. His writings were well regarded by all following church fathers in the West and the East, who noted their rich devotion to the word become man, great pastoral concern and profound interest in monasticism. Athanasius is counted as one of the four great Eastern doctors of the church in the Catholic Church. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, he is labeled as the father of orthodoxy. Some Protestants label him as father of the canon. Athanasius is venerated as a Christian saint, whose feast day is 2 May in Western Christianity, 15 May in the Coptic Orthodox Church, and 18 January in the other Eastern Orthodox Churches. He is venerated by the Oriental and Eastern Orthodox Churches, the Catholic Church, the Lutheran Churches, and the Anglican Communion. Biography <inaudible> <inaudible> Athanasius was born to a Christian family in the city of Alexandria or possibly the nearby Nile Delta town of Damanhur sometime between the years 293 and 298. The earlier date is sometimes assigned due to the maturity revealed in his two earliest treatises Contra Gentis against the heathens and De Incarnation on the Incarnation, which were admittedly written about the year 318 before Arianism had begun to make itself felt, as those writings do not show an awareness of Arianism. However Cornelius Clifford places his birth no earlier than 296 and no later than 298, based on the fact that Athanasius indicates no first-hand recollection of the Maximian persecution of 303, which he suggests Athanasius would have remembered if he had been ten years old at the time. Secondly, the Festal Epistles state that the Arians had accused Athanasius, among other charges, of not having yet attained the canonical age 30 and thus could not have been properly ordained as Patriarch of Alexandria in 328. The accusation must have seemed plausible. The Orthodox Church places his year of birth around 297. Topic. Education. His parents were wealthy enough to afford giving him a fine secular education. He was, nevertheless, clearly not a member of the Egyptian aristocracy. Some Western scholars consider his command of Greek, in which he wrote most if not all, of his surviving works, evidence that he may have been a Greek born in Alexandria. Historical evidence, however, indicates that he was fluent in Coptic as well given the regions of Egypt where he preached. Some surviving copies of his writings are in fact in Coptic, though scholars differ as to whether he himself wrote them in Coptic originally which would make him the first patriarch to do so, or whether these were translations of writings originally in Greek. Rufinus relates a story that as Bishop Alexander stood by a window, he watched boys playing on the seashore below, imitating the ritual of Christian baptism. He sent for the children and discovered that one of the boys Athanasius, had acted as bishop. 
After questioning Athanasius, Bishop Alexander informed him that the baptisms were genuine, as both the form and matter of the sacrament had been performed through the recitation of the correct words and the administration of water, and that he must not continue to do this as those baptized had not been properly catechized. He invited Athanasius and his playfellows to prepare for clerical careers. Alexandria was the most important trade center in the whole empire during Athanasius's boyhood. Intellectually, morally, and politically, it epitomized the ethnically diverse Greco-Roman world, even more than Rome or Constantinople, Antioch or Marseille. Its famous catechetical school, while sacrificing none of its famous passion for orthodoxy since the days of Pantinus, Clement of Alexandria, Origen of Alexandria, Dionysus and Theognostus, had begun to take on an almost secular character in the comprehensiveness of its interests, and had counted influential pagans among its serious auditors. Athanasius recounts being a student, as well as being educated by the martyrs of the Great Tenth and last persecution of Christianity by pagan Rome. This persecution was most severe in the East, particularly in Egypt and Palestine. Peter of Alexandria, the 17th Archbishop of Alexandria, was martyred in 311 in the closing days of that persecution, and may have been one of those teachers. His successor as Bishop of Alexandria, Alexander of Alexandria 312 was an Origenist as well as a documented mentor of Athanasius. According to Sozomen, the bishop Alexander invited Athanasius to be his commensal and secretary. He had been well educated, and was versed in grammar and rhetoric, and had already, while still a young man, and before reaching the episcopate, given proof to those who dwelt with him of his wisdom and acumen. Sos, 2, XVII Athanasius' earliest work, Against the Heathen, on the Incarnation written before 319, bears traces of Origenist Alexandrian thought such as repeatedly quoting Plato and using a definition from Aristotle's Organon but in an orthodox way. Athanasius was also familiar with the theories of various philosophical schools, and in particular with the developments of Neoplatonism. Ultimately, Athanasius would modify the philosophical thought of the school of Alexandria away from the Origenist principles such as the "...entirely allegorical interpretation of the text". Still, in later works, Athanasius quotes Homer more than once Hist. R. 68, or at IV. 29. In his letter to Emperor Constantius, he presents a defense of himself bearing unmistakable traces of a study of Demosthenes de Corona. Athanasius knew Greek and admitted not knowing Hebrew see, e the 39th Festal Letter of St. Athan. The Old Testament passages he quotes frequently come from the Septuagint Greek translation. Only rarely did he use other Greek versions to Aquila once in the Ecthesis, to other versions once or twice on the Psalms, and his knowledge of the Old Testament was limited to the Septuagint. The combination of scriptural study and of Greek learning was characteristic of the famous Alexandrian school. Bishop or patriarch, the highest ecclesial rank in the center of the church, in Alexandria Alexander ordained Athanasius a deacon in 319. In 325, Athanasius served as Alexander's secretary at the First Council of Nicaea. Already a recognized theologian and ascetic, he was the obvious choice to replace his aging mentor Alexander as the Patriarch of Alexandria, despite the opposition of the followers of Arius and Miletius of Lycopolis. At length, in the Council of Nicaea, the term, consubstantial homoousion was suggested by Athanasius, it was immediately adopted, and a formulary of faith embodying it was drawn up by Hosius of Cordoba. From this time to the end of the Arian controversies, the word, consubstantial continued to be the test of Catholic orthodoxy. The formulary of faith drawn up by Hosius is known as the Nicene Creed. However, he was not the originator of the famous homoousion. The term had been proposed in a non-obvious and illegitimate sense by Paul of Samosata to the fathers at Antioch, and had been rejected by them as savoring of materialistic conceptions of the Godhead. While still a deacon under Alexander's care or early in his patriarchate as discussed below, Athanasius may have also become acquainted with some of the solitaries of the Egyptian desert, and in particular Anthony the Great, whose life he is said to have written. Topic. Opposition to Arianism In about 319, when Athanasius was a deacon, a presbyter named Arius came into a direct conflict with Alexander of Alexandria. It appears that Arius reproached Alexander for what he felt were misguided or heretical teachings being taught by the bishop. 
Arius' theological views appear to have been firmly rooted in Alexandrian Christianity. He embraced a subordinationist Christology which taught that Christ was the divine Son Logos of God, made, not begotten, heavily influenced by Alexandrian thinkers like Origen, and which was a common Christological view in Alexandria at the time. Arius had support from a powerful bishop named Eusebius of Nicomedia not to be confused with Eusebius of Caesarea, illustrating how Arius's subordinationist Christology was shared by other Christians in the empire. Arius was subsequently excommunicated by Alexander, and he would begin to elicit the support of many bishops who agreed with his position. Topic: <laughs> Patriarch. Francis A. M. Forbes writes that when the patriarch Alexander was on his deathbed, he called Athanasius, who fled fearing he would be constrained to be made bishop. When the bishops of the church assembled to elect their new patriarch, the whole Catholic population surrounded the church, holding up their hands to heaven and crying, Give us Athanasius. The bishops had nothing better. Athanasius was thus elected, as Gregory tells us. Pope Gregory I, would have full access to the Vatican archives, t. Gilmartin, Professor of History, Maynooth, 1890, writes in Church History, Volume 1, ch. 17, on the death of Alexander, five months after the termination of the Council of Nicaea, Athanasius was unanimously elected to fill the vacancy. He was most unwilling to accept the dignity, for he clearly foresaw the difficulties in which it would involve him. The clergy and people were determined to have him as their bishop, Patriarch of Alexandria, and refused to accept any excuses. He at length consented to accept a responsibility that he sought in vain to escape, and was consecrated in 326, when he was about 30 years of age. Athanasius Episcopate began on 9 May 328 as the Alexandrian Council elected Athanasius to succeed the aged Alexander. That council also denounced various heresies and schisms, many of which continued to preoccupy his 45-year-long episcopate c. the 8th of June 328 to the 2nd of May 373. Patriarch Athanasius spent over 17 years in five exiles ordered by four different Roman emperors, not counting approximately six more incidents in which Athanasius fled Alexandria to escape people seeking to take his life. This gave rise to the expression, Athanasius contra mundum, or Athanasius against the world. During his first years as bishop, Athanasius visited the churches of his territory, which at that time included all of Egypt and Libya. He established contacts with the hermits and monks of the desert, including Pahomius, which proved very valuable to him over the years. Shortly thereafter, Athanasius became occupied with the theological disputes against Arians within the Byzantine Empire that would occupy much of his life. <laughs> first exile Athanasius' first problem lay with Miletius of Lycopolis and his followers, who had failed to abide by the First Council of Nicaea. That council also anathematized Arius. Accused of mistreating Arians and Miletians, Athanasius answered those charges at a gathering of bishops in Tyre, the First Synod of Tyre, in 335. There, Eusebius of Nicomedia and other supporters of Arius deposed Athanasius. On 6 November, both sides of the dispute met with Emperor Constantine I in Constantinople. At that meeting, the Arians claimed Athanasius would try to cut off essential Egyptian grain supplies to Constantinople. He was found guilty, and sent into exile to Augusta Treverorum in Gaul now Trier in Germany. When Athanasius reached his destination in exile in 336, Maximinus of Trier received him, but not as a disgraced person. Athanasius stayed with him for two years. Paul I of Constantinople, who was banished by the Emperor Constantius, also stayed with him. Maximinus cautioned the Emperor Constance against the Arians, revealing their plots. Topic. Second exile When Emperor Constantine I died, Athanasius was allowed to return to his see of Alexandria. Shortly thereafter, however, Constantine's son, the new Roman Emperor Constantius II, renewed the order for Athanasius's banishment in 338. Within a few weeks he set out for Rome to lay his case before the church at large. He had made his appeal to Pope Julius, who took up his cause with wholeheartedness that never wavered down to the day of that holy pontiff's death. The Pope summoned a synod of bishops to meet in Rome. 
After a careful and detailed examination of the entire case, the primate's innocence was proclaimed to the Christian world. During this time, Gregory of Cappadocia was installed as the Patriarch of Alexandria, usurping the absent Athanasius. Athanasius did, however, remain in contact with his people through his annual festal letters, in which he also announced on which date Easter would be celebrated that year. In 339 or 340, nearly 100 bishops met at Alexandria, declared in favor of Athanasius, and vigorously rejected the criticisms of the Eusebian faction at Tyre. Plus, Pope Julius I wrote to the supporters of Arius strongly urging Athanasius's reinstatement, but that effort proved in vain. Pope Julius I called a synod in Rome in 340 to address the matter, which proclaimed Athanasius the rightful bishop of Alexandria. Early in the year 343 we find Athanasius had travelled, via Rome, from Alexandria, North Africa, to Gaul, nowadays Belgium, Holland and surrounding areas, where Hosius of Cordoba was bishop, the great champion of orthodoxy in the West. Together they set out for Sardica, Sophia. A full council of the church was convened, summoned there in deference to the Roman pontiff's wishes. The travel was a mammoth task in itself. At this great gathering of prelates, leaders of the church, the case of Athanasius was taken up once more, that is, Athanasius was formally questioned over misdemeanors and even murder, a man called Arsenius and using his body for magic, an absurd charge. They even produced Arsenius's severed hand. The council was convoked for the purpose of inquiring into the charges against Athanasius and other bishops, on account of which they were deposed from their sees by the Semi Arian Synod of Antioch, 341, and went into exile. It was called according to Socrates, e. h. e. 20, by the two emperors, Constance and Constantius, but, according to Baronius by Pope Julius, 337 to 352, Aden. 343. 176 attended. Eusebian bishops objected to the admission of Athanasius and other deposed bishops to the council, except as accused persons to answer the charges brought against them. Their objections were overridden by the Orthodox bishops, about a hundred were Orthodox, who were the majority. The Eusebians, seeing they had no chance of having their views carried, retired to Philopopolis in Thrace, Philippopolis Thracia, where they held an opposition council, under the presidency of the Patriarch of Antioch, and confirmed the decrees of the Synod of Antioch. His innocence was reaffirmed at the Council of Sardica. Two conciliar letters were prepared, one to the clergy and faithful of Alexandria, the other to the bishops of Egypt and Libya, in which the will of the council was made known. Meanwhile, the Eusebian party had gone to Philippopolis, where they issued an anathema against Athanasius and his supporters. The persecution against the Orthodox party broke out with renewed vigor, and Constantius was induced to prepare drastic measures against Athanasius and the priests who were devoted to him. Orders were given that if the saint attempt to re-enter his see, he should be put to death. Athanasius, accordingly, withdrew from Sardica to Nasus in Mysia, where he celebrated the Easter festival of the year 344. It was Hosius who presided over the Council of Sardica, as he did for the First Council of Nicaea, which like the 341 Synod, found Athanasius innocent. And. He celebrated his last Easter in exile in Achilleia in April 345, received by Bishop Fortunatianus. Eastern Bishop Gregory of Cappadocia died, probably of violence in June of 345. Gregory, an Arian bishop, had taken over the See of Alexandria, the emissary to the Emperor Constantius sent by the bishops of the Sardica Council to report the finding of the council, who had been met at first with most insulting treatment, now received a favorable hearing. Constantius was forced to reconsider his decision, owing to a threatening letter from his brother Constance and the uncertain conditions of affairs on the Persian border, and he accordingly made up his mind to yield. But three separate letters were needed to overcome the natural hesitation of Athanasius. He passed rapidly from Achilleia to Treves, from Treves to Rome and from Rome by way of the northern route to Adrianople, Edirne, and Antioch, Ankara, where he met Constantius. He was accorded a gracious interview by the emperor, and sent back to his see in triumph, and began his memorable ten years of peace, which lasted to the third exile, 356. Pope Julius died in April 352, and was succeeded by Liberius. For two years Liberius had been favorable to the cause of Athanasius, but driven at last into exile, he was induced to sign an ambiguous formula, from which the great Nicene text, the Homoousion, had been studiously omitted. 
In 355 a council was held at Milan, where in spite of the vigorous opposition of a handful of loyal prelates among the western bishops, a fourth condemnation of Athanasius was announced to the world. With his friends scattered, the saintly Hosius in exile, and Pope Liberius denounced as acquiescing in Arian formularies, Athanasius could hardly hope to escape. On the night of 8 February 356, while engaged in services in the Church of St. Thomas, a band of armed men burst in to secure his arrest. It was the beginning of his third exile. T. Gilmartin, Professor of History, Maynooth, 1890, writes in Church History, Volume 1, ch. 17, by Constantius's order, the sole ruler of the Roman Empire at the death of his brother Constance, the Council of Arles in 353, was held, which was presided over by Vincent, Bishop of Capua, in the name of Pope Liberius, the fathers terrified of the threats of the emperor, an avowed Arian, they consented to the condemnation of Athanasius. The Pope refused to accept their decision, and requested the Emperor to hold another council, in which the charges against Athanasius could be freely investigated. To this Constantius consented, for he felt able to control the council in Milan. Three hundred bishops assembled in Milan, most from the west, only a few from the east, in 355. They met in the Church of Milan. Shortly, the Emperor ordered them to a hall in the Imperial Palace, thus ending any free debate. He presented an Arian formula of faith for their acceptance. He threatened any who refused with exile and death. All, with the exception of Dionysus, Bishop of Milan, and the two papal legates, viz., Eusebius of Vercelli and Lucifer of Colliery, consented to the Arian creed and the condemnation of Athanasius. Those who refused were sent into exile. The decrees were forwarded to the Pope for approval, but were rejected, because of the violence to which the bishops were subjected. Topic. Third exile Through the influence of the Eusebian faction at Constantinople, an Arian bishop, George of Cappadocia, was now appointed to rule the See of Alexandria. Athanasius, after remaining some days in the neighborhood of the city, finally withdrew into the desert of Upper Egypt, where he remained for a period of six years, living the life of the monks, devoting himself to the composition of a group of writings. Apology to Constantius. The Apology for his flight, the letter to the monks, and the history of the Arians. Constantius, renewing his previous policies favoring the Arians, banished Athanasius from Alexandria once again. This was followed, in 356, by an attempt to arrest Athanasius during a vigil service. Athanasius fled to Upper Egypt, where he stayed in several monasteries and other houses. During this period, Athanasius completed his work Four Orations Against the Arians and defended his own recent conduct in the Apology to Constantius and Apology for his flight. Constantius's persistence in his opposition to Athanasius, combined with reports Athanasius received about the persecution of non-Arians by the new Arian bishop George of Laodicea, prompted Athanasius to write his more emotional history of the Arians, in which he described Constantius as a precursor of the Antichrist. Constantius ordered Liberius into exile in 356, giving him three days to comply. He was ordered into banishment to Baroea, in Thrace. He sent expensive presents if he were to accept the Arian position, which Liberius refused. He sent him 500 pieces of gold, to bear his charges, which Liberius refused, saying he might bestow them on his flatters, as he did also a like present from the Empress, bidding the messenger learn to believe in Christ, and not to persecute the Church of God. Attempts were made to leave the presents in the Church, but Liberius threw them out. Constantius hereupon sent for him under a strict guard to Milan, where in a conference recorded by Theodore, he boldly told Constantius that Athanasius had been acquitted at Sardica, and his enemies proved calumniators see calumny and impostors, and that it was unjust to condemn a person who could not be legally convicted of any crime. The emperor was reduced to silence on every article, but being the more out of patience, ordered him into banishment, Liberius went into exile. Constantius, after two years went to Rome to celebrate the twentieth year of his reign. The ladies joined in a petition to him that he would restore Liberius. He assented, upon condition that he should comply with the bishops, then, at court. He subscribed the condemnation of Athanasius, and a confession or creed which had been framed by the Arians at Sirmium. And he no sooner had recovered his see that he declared himself for the creed of Nicaea, as Theodoret testifies. Theodoret, hist, lib. E. C. 17. The emperor knew what he wanted people to believe. So did the bishops at his court. Athanasius stuck by the Orthodox creed. 
Constantius was an avowed Arian, became sole ruler in 350, at the death of his brother, Constance. T. Gilmartin, Professor of History, Maynooth, 1890, writes in Church History, Volume 1, ch. 17. The Arians sought the approval of an ecumenical council. They sought to hold two councils. Constantius, summoned the bishops of the East to meet at Seleucia in Isauria, and those of the West to Rimini in Italy. A preliminary conference was held by the Arians at Sirmium, to agree a formula of faith. A homoan creed was adopted, declaring the Son to be like the Father. The two met in autumn of 359. At Seleucia, 150 bishops, of which 105 were semi-Arian. The semi-Arians refused to accept anything less than the homoousian, see, homoousian, formulary of faith. The imperial prefect was obliged to disband, without agreeing on any creed. Acacius, the leader of the Homoian party went to Constantinople, where the Sirmian formulary of faith was approved by the Home Synod, consisted of those bishops who happened to be present at the court for the time, and a decree of deposition issued against the leaders of the semi-Arians. At Rimini were over 400 of which 80 were Arian, the rest were Orthodox. The Orthodox Fathers refused to accept any creed but the Nicene, while the others were equally in favor of the Sirmian. Each party sent a deputation to the Emperor to say there was no probability to agreement, and asked for the bishops to return to their dioceses. For the purpose of wearing down the Orthodox bishops, Sulpicius Severius says, Constantius delayed his answer for several months, and finally prevailed on them to accept the Sirmian creed. It was after this council that Jerome said, the whole world groaned in astonishment to find itself Arian. The Arians no longer presented an unbroken front to their orthodox opponents. The Emperor Constantius, who had been the cause of so much trouble, died on 4 November 361 and was succeeded by Julian. The proclamation of the new prince's accession was the signal for a pagan outbreak against the still dominant Arian faction in Alexandria. George, the usurping bishop, was flung into prison and murdered. An obscure presbyter of the name of Pistus was immediately chosen by the Arians to succeed him, when fresh news arrived that filled the Orthodox party with hope. An edict had been put forth by Julian permitting the exiled bishops of the Galileans to return to their towns and provinces. Athanasius received a summons from his own flock, and he accordingly re-entered his episcopal capital on the 22nd of February 362. In 362, he convened a council at Alexandria and presided over it with Eusebius of Vercelli. Athanasius appealed for unity among all those who had faith in Christianity, even if they differed on matters of terminology. This prepared the groundwork for his definition of the orthodox doctrine of the Trinity. However, the council also was directed against those who denied the divinity of the Holy Spirit, the human soul of Christ, and Christ's divinity. Mild measures were agreed on for those heretic bishops who repented, but severe penance was decreed for the chief leaders of the major heresies. With characteristic energy, he set to work to re establish the somewhat shattered fortunes of the Orthodox party and to purge the theological atmosphere of uncertainty. To clear up the misunderstandings that had arisen in the course of the previous years, an attempt was made to determine still further the significance of the Nicene formularies. In the meanwhile, Julian, who seems to have become suddenly jealous of the influence that Athanasius was exercising at Alexandria, addressed an order to Ecdysius, the prefect of Egypt, peremptorily commanding the expulsion of the restored primate, on the ground that he had never been included in the imperial act of clemency. The edict was communicated to the bishop by Pythicodorus Trico, who, though described in the Chronicon Athanasianum 35 as a philosopher, seems to have behaved with brutal insolence. On 23 October the people gathered about the proscribed bishop to protest against the emperor's decree, but Athanasius urged them to submit, consoling them with the promise that his absence would be of short duration. Topic. Fourth exile. In 362, the new emperor Julian, noted for his opposition to Christianity, ordered Athanasius to leave Alexandria once again. Athanasius left for Upper Egypt, remaining there with the Desert Fathers until Julian's death on 26 June 363. Athanasius returned in secret to Alexandria, where he soon received a document from the new emperor, Jovian, reinstating him once more in his episcopal functions. His first act was to convene a council which reaffirmed the terms of the Nicene Creed. 
Early in September 363 he set out for Antioch on the Orontes, bearing a synodal letter, in which the pronouncements of this council had been embodied. At Antioch he had an interview with the new emperor, who received him graciously and even asked him to prepare an exposition of the Orthodox faith. The following February Jovian died, and in October, 364, Athanasius was once more in exile. Fifth exile Two years later, the emperor Valens, who favored the Arian position, in his turn exiled Athanasius. This time Athanasius simply left for the outskirts of Alexandria, where he stayed for only a few months before the local authorities convinced Valens to retract his order of exile. Some early reports state that Athanasius spent this period of exile at his family's ancestral tomb in a Christian cemetery. It was during this period, the final exile, that he is said to have spent four months in hiding in his father's tomb, Sos. Hist. E -C -C -L. V. X -I -I -S -O -C. Hist. E -C -C -L. I -V. X -I -I. The accession of Valens gave a fresh lease of life to the Arian party. He issued a decree banishing the bishops who had been deposed by Constantius, but who had been permitted by Jovian to return to their sees. The news created the greatest consternation in the city of Alexandria itself, and the prefect, in order to prevent a serious outbreak, gave public assurance that the very special case of Athanasius would be laid before the emperor. But Athanasius seems to have divined what was preparing in secret against him. He quietly withdrew from Alexandria, 5 October, and took up his abode in a country house outside the city. Valens, who seems to have sincerely dreaded the possible consequences of another popular outbreak, within a few weeks issued orders allowing Athanasius to return to his episcopal see. In 366 Pope Liberius died and was succeeded by Pope Damasus, a man of strong character and holy life. Two years later, in a council of the church, it was decreed that no bishop should be consecrated unless he held the creed of Nicaea, F. A. Forbes. Topic. Final years and death After returning to Alexandria in early 366, Athanasius spent his final years repairing all the damage done during the earlier years of violence, dissent, and exile. He resumed writing and preaching undisturbed, and characteristically re-emphasized the view of the Incarnation which had been defined at Nicaea. On 2 May 373, having consecrated Peter II, one of his presbyters as his successor, Athanasius died peacefully in his own bed, surrounded by his clergy and faithful supporters. Works <laughs> <laughs> In Coptic literature, Athanasius is the first patriarch of Alexandria to use Coptic as well as Greek in his writings. Topic: <inaudible> Polemical and theological works. Athanasius was not a speculative theologian. As he stated in his first letters to Serapion, he held on to the tradition, teaching, and faith proclaimed by the apostles and guarded by the fathers. He held that not only was the Son of God consubstantial with the Father, but so was the Holy Spirit, which had a great deal of influence in the development of later doctrines regarding the Trinity. Athanasius' letter concerning the decrees of the Council of Nicaea, De Decretis, is an important historical as well as theological account of the proceedings of that council, and another letter from 367 is the first known listing of all those books now accepted as the New Testament. Earlier similar lists vary by the omission or addition of a few books. Examples of Athanasius' polemical writings against his theological opponents include orations against the Arians, his defense of the divinity of the Holy Spirit, letters to Serapion in the 360s, and on the Holy Spirit, against Macedonianism and on the Incarnation. Athanasius also wrote a two-part against the heathen and the incarnation of the Word of God. Completed probably early in his life, before the Arian controversy, they constitute the first classic work of developed Orthodox theology. In the first part, Athanasius attacks several pagan practices and beliefs. The second part presents teachings on the redemption. Also in these books, Athanasius put forward the belief, referencing John chapter 1 verses 1 to 4, that the Son of God, the Eternal Word Logos through whom God created the world, entered that world in human form to lead men back into the harmony from which they had earlier fallen away. His other important works include his letters to Serapion, which defends the divinity of the Holy Spirit. 
In a letter to Epictetus of Corinth, Athanasius anticipates future controversies in his defense of the humanity of Christ. Another of his letters, to Dracontius, urges that monk to leave the desert for the more active duties of a bishop. Athanasius also wrote several works of biblical exegesis, primarily on Old Testament materials. The most important of these is his epistle to Marcellinus PG 27-12-45 on how to incorporate psalm saying into one's spiritual practice. Excerpts remain of his discussions concerning the Book of Genesis, the Song of Solomon, and Psalms. Perhaps his most notable letter was his festal letter, written to his church in Alexandria when he was in exile, as he could not be in their presence. This letter clearly shows his stand that accepting Jesus as the divine Son of God is not optional but necessary. I know moreover that not only this thing saddens you, but also the fact that while others have obtained the churches by violence, you are meanwhile cast out from your places. For they hold the places, but you the apostolic faith. They are, it is true, in the places, but outside of the true faith, while you are outside the places indeed, but the faith, within you. Let us consider whether is the greater, the place or the faith. Clearly the true faith. Who then has lost more, or who possesses more? He who holds the place, or he who holds the faith? Topic. Biographical and ascetic His biography of Anthony the Great entitled Life of Antony, Bios Chi Politea Petros Antoniu Vita Antoni became his most widely read work. Translated into several languages, it became something of a best-seller in its day and played an important role in the spreading of the ascetic ideal in Eastern and Western Christianity. It depicted Anthony as an illiterate yet holy man who continuously engaged in spiritual exercises in the Egyptian desert and struggled against demonic powers. It later served as an inspiration to Christian monastics in both the East and the West. Athanasius' works on ascetism also include a discourse on virginity, a short work on love and self control, and a treatise on sickness and health, of which only fragments remain. Topic. Misattributed works There are several other works ascribed to him, although not necessarily generally accepted as being his own. These include the so-called Athanasian Creed which is today generally seen as being of 5th century Galician origin, and a complete expositions on the Psalms PG 27-60-545. Topic. Veneration Athanasius was originally buried in Alexandria, Egypt, but his remains were later transferred to the Chiesa di San Zaccaria in Venice, Italy. During Pope Shinoda III's visit to Rome from 4 to 10 May 1973, Pope Paul VI gave the Coptic Patriarch a relic of Athanasius, which he brought back to Egypt on 15 May. The relic is currently preserved under the new St. Mark's Coptic Orthodox Cathedral in Cairo, Egypt. However, the majority of Athanasius's corpse remains in the Venetian Church. All major Christian denominations which officially recognize saints venerate Athanasius. Western Christians observe his feast day on 2 May, the anniversary of his death. The Catholic Church considers Athanasius a doctor of the Church. For Coptic Christians, his feast day is Passion 7 now circa the 15th of May. Eastern Orthodox liturgical calendars remember Athanasius on 18 January. Gregory of Nazianus 330 also a doctor of the Church, said, When I praise Athanasius, virtue itself is my theme, for I name every virtue as often as I mention him who was possessed of all virtues. He was the true pillar of the Church. His life and conduct were the rule of bishops, and his doctrine the rule of the Orthodox faith. Topic. Character Historian Cornelius Clifford said in his account, "...Athanasius was the greatest champion of Catholic belief on the subject of the Incarnation that the Church has ever known and in his lifetime earned the characteristic title of Father of Orthodoxy, by which he has been distinguished ever since." B. L. John Henry Newman described him as a principal instrument, after the Apostles, by which the sacred truths of Christianity have been conveyed and secured to the world. Letters. Historian Cornelius Clifford says, His career almost personifies a crisis in the history of Christianity, and he may be said rather to have shaped the events in which he took part than to have been shaped by them. 
The greater majority of church leaders and the emperors fell into support for Arianism, so much so that Jerome, 340–420, wrote of the period, "...the whole world groaned and was amazed to find itself Arian." He, Athanasius, even suffered an unjust excommunication from Pope Liberius 325 who was exiled and lent towards compromise, until he was allowed back to the See of Rome. Athanasius stood virtually alone against the world. C. Third exile. Above. Topic: <laughs> Historical significance and controversies. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> New Testament canon. It was the custom of the bishops of Alexandria to circulate a letter after Epiphany each year, establishing the date of Easter and therefore other movable feasts. They also took the occasion to discuss other matters. Athanasius wrote 45 festal letters. Athanasius' 39th festal letter, written in 367, is widely regarded as a milestone in the evolution of the canon of New Testament books. Athanasius is the first person to identify the same 27 books of the New Testament that are in use today. Up until then, various similar lists of works to be read in churches were in use. Athanasius compiled the list to resolve questions about such texts as the Epistle of Barnabas. Athanasius includes the Book of Baruch and the Letter of Jeremiah and places the Book of Esther among the seven books not in the canon but to be read, along with the Wisdom of Solomon, Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, Judith, Tobit, the Didache, and the Shepherd of Hermas. Athanasius' list is similar to the Codex Vaticanus in the Vatican Library, probably written in Rome, in 340 by Alexandrian scribes for Emperor Constance, during the period of Athanasius' seven year exile in the city. The establishment of the canon was not a unilateral decision by a bishop in Alexandria, but the result of a process of careful investigation and deliberation, as documented in a Codex of the Greek Bible and, 27 years later, in his festal letter, Pope Damasus I, the Bishop of Rome in 382, promulgated a list of books which contained a New Testament canon identical to that of Athanasius. A synod in Hippo in 393 repeated Athanasius and Damasus' New Testament list without the Epistle to the Hebrews, and the Council of Carthage 397 repeated Athanasius and Damasus' complete New Testament list. Scholars debate whether Athanasius' list in 367 formed the basis for later lists. Because Athanasius' canon is the closest canon of any of the Church Fathers to the one used by Protestant churches today, many Protestants point to Athanasius as the father of the canon. Topic. Episcopal consecration In the light of Mother F. A. Forbes's research and reference to Pope St. Gregory's writings, it would appear that Athanasius was constrained to be bishop. She writes that when the Patriarch Alexander was on his death bed he called Athanasius, who fled fearing he would be constrained to be made bishop. When the bishops of the Church assembled to elect their new Patriarch, the whole Catholic population surrounded the Church, holding up their hands to heaven and crying, Give us Athanasius. Quote, the bishops had nothing better. Athanasius was thus elected, as Gregory tells us. Pope Gregory I, would have full access to the Vatican archives, Alban Butler, writes on the subject. Five months after this great council, Nicaea, St. Alexander lying on his death bed, recommended to his clergy and people the choice of Athanasius for his successor, thrice repeating his name. In consequence of his recommendation, the bishops of all Egypt assembled at Alexandria, and finding the people and clergy unanimous in their choice of Athanasius for Patriarch, they confirmed the election about the middle of year 326. He seems, then, to have been about thirty years of age. Topic. Supporters Christian denominations worldwide revere Athanasius as a saint, teacher, and father. They cite his defense of the Christology described in the first chapter of the Gospel of St. John and his significant theological works c. S. Lewis calls on the incarnation of the Word of God a masterpiece as evidence of his righteousness. They also emphasize his close relationship with Anthony the Great, the ancient monk who was one of the founders of the Christian monastic movement. The Gospel of St. John and particularly the first chapter demonstrates the divinity of Jesus. This Gospel in itself is the greatest support of Athanasius' stand. 
The Gospel of St. John's first chapter began to be said at the end of Mass, we believe as a result of Athanasius, and his life's stand, but quietly, and was later, together with some other originally private devotions, absorbed by the liturgical service proper as so-called Last Gospel 1 -1 The beginning of John's Gospel was much used as an object of special devotion throughout the Middle Ages, the practice of saying it at the altar grew, and eventually Pius V made this practice universal for the Roman Rite in his edition of the Missal 1570. It became a firm custom with exceptions in using an other gospel in use from 1920. Gregory of Nazianus begins or. 21 with, When I praise Athanasius, virtue itself is my theme, for I name every virtue as often as I mention him who was possessed of all virtues. He was the true pillar of the Church. His life and conduct were the rule of bishops, and his doctrine the rule of the Orthodox faith. Cyril of Alexandria in the first letter says, "...Athanasius is one who can be trusted, he would not say anything that is not in accord with sacred scripture." EP1. Many modern historians point out that such a hostile attitude towards Athanasius is based on an unfair judgment of historical sources. Saint Pope Pius X said in a letter to philosopher friend and correspondent in the closing years of his life, Epist. LXXI, ad max, let what was confessed by the fathers of Nicaea prevail. Topic: <laughs> Critics. Throughout most of his career, Athanasius had many detractors. Classics scholar Timothy Barnes recounts ancient allegations against Athanasius, from defiling an altar, to selling church grain that had been meant to feed the poor for his own personal gain, and even violence and murder to suppress dissent. Athanasius used Arian to describe both followers of Arius, and as a derogatory polemical term for Christians who disagreed with his formulation of the Trinity. Athanasius called many of his opponents Arian. Except for Miletius Miletus, scholars now believe that the Arian party was not monolithic, but held drastically different theological views that spanned the early Christian theological spectrum. They supported the tenets of Origenist thought and subordinationist theology, but had little else in common. Moreover, many labeled Arian did not consider themselves followers of Arius. In addition, non homoousian bishops disagreed with being labeled as followers of Arius, since Arius was merely a presbyter, while they were fully ordained bishops. However, others point to the Council of Nicaea as proof in and of itself that Arianism was a real theological ideology. The old allegations continue to be made against Athanasius, however, many centuries later. For example, Richard E. Rubinstein suggests that Athanasius ascended to the rank of bishop in Alexandria under questionable circumstances because some questioned whether he had reached the minimum age of 30 years, and further that Athanasius employed force when it suited his cause or personal interests. Thus, he argues that a small number of bishops who supported Athanasius held a private consecration to make him bishop. Topic. Selected works. Athanasius. Contra Gentis, De Incarnation translated by Thompson, Robert W., Text and E.T. Oxford, Clarendon Press, 1971. On the Incarnation at TheologyNetwork.org Letters to Serapion on the Holy Spirit at Archive.org See also Apostles' Creed Homoousian Pontifical Greek College of St. Athanasius Eastern Catholic Church Eugenius of Carthage References Sources Alexander of Alexandria. Catholic Epistle. The Ecole Initiative, ecole.evansville.edu Anatolios, Khalid, Athanasius, The Coherence of His Thought New York, Routledge, 1998. Arnold, Duane W. H., The Early Episcopal Career of Athanasius of Alexandria Notre Dame, Indiana, University of Notre Dame, 1991. Arius. Arius's Letter to Eusebius of Nicomedia. Ecclesiastical History, ed. Theodoret. Esser, 2, Vol. 3, 41, The École Initiative, ecole.evansville.edu 
Atwater, Donald and Catherine Rachel John. The Penguin Dictionary of Saints, 3rd edition, New York, Penguin, 1993. ISBN 0-14-051312-4. Barnes, Timothy D., Athanasius and Constantius, Theology and Politics in the Constantinian Empire Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, 1993. Barnes, Timothy D., Constantine and Eusebius Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, 1981. Bouter, P. F. 2010. Athanasius in Dutch. Campen, Koch. Brack, David. Athanasius and the Politics of Asceticism, 1995. Clifford, Cornelius. Athanasius. Catholic Encyclopedia, Vol. 2, 1907, 35 to 40. Chadwick, Henry. Faith and Order at the Council of Nicaea. Harvard Theological Review, LIII, Cambridge, Mass. Harvard University Press, 1960, 171 to 195. Ernest, James D., The Bible in Athanasius of Alexandria Leiden, Brill, 2004 Freeman, Charles, The Closing of the Western Mind, The Rise of Faith and the Fall of Reason Alfred A. Knopf, 2003. Haas, Christopher. The Arians of Alexandria, Vigilie Christianae Vol. 47, No. 3 1993, 234-245. Hansen, R. P. C., The Search for the Christian Doctrine of God, The Arian Controversy, 318-381 t. and t. Clark, 1988. Canengieser, Charles, Alexander and Arius of Alexandria, The Last Antinicene Theologians, Miscellanea en homenaje al P. Antonio Orb Compostellanum Vol. 35, No. 1-2, Santiago de Compostela, 1990, 391-403. Canengieser, Charles Athanasius of Alexandria vs. Arius, The Alexandrian Crisis, in the Roots of Egyptian Christianity Studies in Antiquity and Christianity, ed. Berger A. Pearson and James E. Goring 1986, 204-215. Ng, Nathan K. K., The Spirituality of Athanasius 1991. Pedersen, Alvin 1995. Athanasius. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Morehouse. Rubinstein, Richard E., When Jesus Became God, The Epic Fight Over Christ's Divinity in the Last Days of Rome New York, Harcourt Brace and Company, 1999. Williams, Rowan, Arius, Heresy and Tradition London, Darton, Longman and Todd, 1987. Topic further reading Anatolios, Khaled. Athanasius, London, Routledge, 2004. Contains selections from the Orations Against the Arians pp. 87-175 and Letters to Serapion on the Holy Spirit pp. 212-33, together with the full texts of On the Council of Nicaea pp. 176-211 and Letter 40, to Adelphius pp. 234-42 Greg, Robert C. Athanasius, The Life of Antony and the Letter to Marcellinus, Classics of Western Spirituality New York, Paulist Press, 1980. Schaff, Philip 1867. History of the Christian Church, Nicene and Post-Nicene Christianity, A.D. 311-600, 3rd. Peabody, Massachusetts, Hendrickson. Schaff, Philip, Henry Wace 1903. A Select Library of Nicene and Post-Nicene Fathers of the Christian Church, St. Athanasius, Select Works and Letters, 4th. New York, Scribner. Topic external links Media related to St. Athanasius at Wikimedia Commons Works written by or about Athanasius of Alexandria at Wikisource Greek Wikisource has original text related to this article, Athanasios Alexandria's official web site of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Alexandria and All Africa Works by Patriarch of Alexandria St. Athanasius at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Athanasius of Alexandria at Internet Archive Works by Athanasius of Alexandria at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Archibald Robinson, Athanasius, Select Letters and Works, Edinburgh 1885. The so-called Athanasian Creed, not written by Athanasius, see Athanasian Creed above. Athanasius Select Resources, Bilingual Anthology, in Greek Original and English, two audio lectures about Athanasius on the Deity of Christ, Dr. N. Needham Concorita Cyclopedia, Athanasius Christian Cyclopedia, Athanasius Opera Omnia by Migni Petrologia Graeca with analytical indexes Saint Athanasius the Great the Archbishop of Alexandria Orthodox Icon and Synaxarian English Key to Athanasius Work The Writings of Athanasius 
Athanasius in chronological order introducing, Athanasius audio resource by Dr. Michael Reeves. Two lectures on TheologyNetwork.org Letter of St. Athanasius to his flock at the Our Lady of the Rosary Library Street. Athanasius Patriarch of Alexandria at the Christian Classics Ethereal Library Colonnade statue in St. Peter's Square. <laughs>